you've done all three, I want to know about it. Or if it's your first time, <laughs> let me know about it as well. Yeah. And hey, I also, we want to know where you're tuning in from. Are you tuning in from America, Canada, the UK, New Zealand, or right Hello, here, Lumpa. Australia, Hello. where we're live streaming from. A big hello to you yes. guys. Welcome. And we should introduce ourselves as well. Yes. My name is Emily Antcliffe and this is Tyler, Tyler. Antcliffe. And nice we've been hosting you, you through pre-show for yeah. all five sessions today. We're loving We're it. just full of energy, ready yes. to get going. So, hey, we'd love for you to be turning on your Zoom cameras. Yes. Because this pre-show has got a little bit of audience engagement. Yeah. So please, wherever you are right now, turn on your cameras. We'll be calling upon you soon. Okay. <laughs> now, this is either going to terrify you or you're going to love it. But we're going to do a dance cam. Yes. Oh, you might love dance. <laughs> You might hate it, but you know what? David danced naked wow. before the Lord. Undignified. Really? <laughs> we'll be keeping our if you're on Zoom, keep your clothes on. Keep it on. But we'll we're gonna dance soon. undignified before the Lord, are we not? Yes, but yes. first, yes. let's get things warmed up with a mm -hmm. few baby Ooh, photo okay. guesses. So okay. we have got some photos of our pastors yes. and babies, and yes. we want you to guess who that is. So we're gonna put it on the screen okay. and I want you guys to put in the chat who you think it is. Okay, shall we okay, do it's it? It's coming up, it's coming up. Okay, here we go. And whilst we wait, we've got some people coming in from Ooh. Australia, Kuala Lumpur, to Toronto, Indonesia. Welcome, hey guys, everyone. welcome. Okay, we have our first baby photo. Now these are hmm. these are pastors in our movement. You will know these. Okay. I don't know this Who's that one. Be? Is I, it, this I mean, we've had Pastor Chris. These are yes, brand new baby Chris. photos. Yeah, that's brand true. Brand new, brand new. Is it Pastor Bernie this time? Oh, I don't know. Someone from Toronto. I don't know. Okay, hmm. type it in the chats. What's your guess? What's your All guess? Right, Who here is we it? Go. I want to know. I want to see. Let's okay. reveal. Okay, 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 okay. Three, two, one. We have. Oh, Daniel it's very. Pierce. It's Danielle Pierce. Did what anyone a, get that right? I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> wow, Danielle Pierce. Very, very cute, cute Pastor kid. Danielle. Very cute. Very well cute. Well done. All right, well let's done. do our next one. We're let's just getting again. warmed up. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a cheeky. Quite the poster. Very cheeky little guy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yes, you do it well. You do it well. Okay, once again, let us know in the chat who do you think this is? Who, could who this do you think? Be? Okay. Oh, a lot of people guessing Pastor yeah. Bernie, Pastor Chris, Pastor Nicole, maybe from LA, Pastor Jess. Okay, Pastor Val. Okay, okay. Who could this one be? Who is it? Okay, right oh, in the no. chat. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. find out. Ready? Three, two, one. It's Jay Jake Bellum. Bellum. Jake Pastor Bellum. Jake. You know what? This makes a lot of sense. He's it a very, sense. he's a very pose, cheeky man. He's everything. Very cheeky it all man. adds up. I know. Okay, let's do one more. One, one more. more. Last okay. one. Last one. One more. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Oh, okay. Ooh, looks a bit haunted, this one. <laughs> looks a bit a little girl. icy blunt. You know what? I actually, I feel connected to really? this one. Yes, I do. Oh, okay, weird. get your guesses in. Get your guesses in. Who is it? Who is it? Three, two, be? one. Oh, it's but past her mom. It's Amanda my mom. Anklin. It's Amanda Anklin. There she is. Have you seen that photo before? Yes, I have. I cheated. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Well done, okay. everyone. I hope you had some yes. good guesses at home. And it is time, is it time to dance. To dance Let's everyone. dance. Okay. So, how does this work? Why don't you turn explain? on your cameras on Zoom? You're going to be behind us on the screen, so everyone's going to see you. And if you get popped up, if you get pinned, it's your turn to dance. And you yep. better dance for your life. So get As ready. If, we want yep. you on your feet. Get some loose Should we do some stretches right now? Let's do some stretches. We're going to get your Zoom screens on here so we, don't, we can see you. We don't want you to pull anything, so really make, make sure you're ready. Okay. Yep. All right, okay. Everyone. We're ready. We're ready. Let's Watch do this. Watch out for your video. Okay. Here the we first go. victim, I mean, contestant is. Oh, oh Brendan! Come on, Take her yes. come on, it's you! Yes, yes it's you! Oh, he did oh. the flip! Oh. oh my oh. gosh! 10 out of 10! 10. 10 out of 10, oh. right there! Next, next, Who's next, the next, next! next. Oh, oh! Oh, come on! From Canada! Go, 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 go! Yeah, I know, I know. Why? Why me? No, go again. Oh, he's mixing that pot. Oh, oh, he's yeah. mixing it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's concocting something. Oh, oh, the Simpsons! What are you? No, no! What a, what a blessing Show us for you. Your moves. Okay, beautiful. But wow, Wayne's throwing it back. Love it. Yes, beautiful. Love that. Love that. Okay, one more. One more. Yes, oh, you, sir. More. Yes, you. Yes, yes, you. Yes, you. Oh, oh, the oh, fear. Oh. The fear in their face. Okay. Okay, a lot of shoulders going on here. Yeah, a lot okay. Of who's going to be next? We like shoulders. One more, one more. Yes, you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Bit of a oh, boogie. Oh, bit of shoulders. Bit of a boogie. Love <laughs> Maybe not his natural skill. Maybe okay, next, more, next, next. More. Okay, next, next. You Who's pause next? That. I want another one. I want this man right here. <laughs> Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Yeah! Okay. yeah come on! Oh, oh, oh there oh, it is! Oh, yes! Oh, oh. Shimmy. Yes! 
yes. Oh, so you have found your calling. There it is. Wow, and the bedlam. Oh, come on, bedlam. Okay, yes, it's you. Don't pretend you didn't hear that. Yes, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my gosh, I mean, babe, we've seen some amazing dances, but... We have. Do you think we should show them? Should we bring them? it home? Should we show it's how we it's done? We still need the music. Oh, we need the music. Okay, okay. How's it going? Are you ready? Come in. Yeah, I'm ready. Five, six, seven, Let's go. and one. One, two, and two, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. Oh, oh, round four. That's how you do it. Oh. We were ready. We were ready for dance camp. I mean, we, we love dance camp. We whipped that one up before, yeah. so don't be jealous. It's not like we don't be jealous. Or if, if your dance cam didn't look as good, <laughs> don't be jealous. It's so good to see so many faces all yes. on one screen. I all love this about our global conference over, today. We have over 600 churches in our movement, and we get to be together yeah. today. Isn't that amazing? 64 countries watching with wow. us today. Amazing. This is so exciting, and awesome. we have got this session awesome. three, three coming the up. The best right session. Now. The best session so far. So. If you haven't yet, quickly, get that coffee, get that tea. We're about to Bible, launch. Notebook. Bible, notepad, Turn everything. Turn your zoom on. Yep, make sure your camera's on. We want to see your smiley faces on the screen. And so, I mean, get ready, we everybody. are having the best day ever. And really, it's just getting warmed up. Oh, yeah. We're not even halfway through. <laughs> not even halfway through. So if you've been doing an all-nighter, keep going. Congratulations. More coffee for you. You've got more this. coffee, more. All it right, everybody, there. enjoy session three. We'll see you soon. Love you guys. See ya. Welcome back, C3 from all around the world, wherever you're watching. Come on, this is Global Conference. How awesome has oh, it been? It's so good. It's so good to be together virtually with yeah. you all. I can't hug you, but you're there through the screen. <laughs> and yeah. I just wanted to introduce ourselves. I am Jess. This is Sam. We hey. are from Toronto in Canada. And so we've affectionately nicknamed this session, session three, the East Coast late night session. <laughs> It's our bedtime, yeah. but you know, we've get got, your Red Bull. Yeah, come on, get your sugar levels up, but lean yeah. in because I got a feeling, Jess, oh, that this is going to be the be best session so far. <laughs> it sure is. All right, and you know what? Wherever you're watching from, you might not be from the East Coast. Why don't you shout out in the chats where you're watching from? But not only that, why don't you take this chance to yeah. encourage maybe your pastors or encourage other people in your church of something cool that your church has been doing in this season? We want to take a chance to like brag on each other because we're right. a family. Yeah, love that. share some news. Let us mm -hmm. know what's going on. Uh, whether you're watching on YouTube, use the YouTube right. chat, the Zoom link. It's just so mm -hmm. good to be together. Now, this love is session it. three. Yes. And there is some very exciting stuff in store. There sure so. is. Yeah, we have Pastor Phil and Pastor Chris. Come Woo! on. Amazing. Yeah. We also have Pastor Mark Kelsey and then lots of great stuff after. Yeah, there's master classes, breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. So stay engaged, lean in, and it is going to be 
exciting. Mm -hmm. And now we have such an honor. We get to actually worship together virtually. Come and on. so right now we have uh, a C3 church called Hope City in Kuala Lumpur that we get to worship with. Right. So get up off the couch, <laughs> wherever you are, and raise your faith and let's worship Jesus <laughs> as a global family uh, all around the world right now.
How amazing was that? Incredible, awesome. incredible. My Lord, I just love worshiping, Chris. Oh, yes, yes. We, have, we have with us today to pray in this session yeah. the legendary <laughs> Pastor Richard and Kathy Green from C3 Reach. You'll see the link on your screen yeah. shortly. It is such a fabulous thing to have you guys here. This is incredible. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. I know. We're, we're, we're going to be praying together. Amen. For a lot of the churches in your particular family. Yeah, it's yeah. Region. The REACH churches. And in particular, we're going to be praying yeah. for those that are persecuted. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But you know, I thought also that as we begin this prayer time, we could begin, Chris, by, yeah. by just praying for all of our pastors yes. all around the world who who are facing difficult times. Yes. The, the ministry is, some people might think it's easy or whatever, <laughs> but it certainly is not. Mm -hmm. You have so engaged so in the most important task on, on earth, yeah. right? And it's mm -hmm. a warfare. It's a warfare. It is a true warfare. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. You, you are battling demons and you have enemies outside, within, everywhere around us. And so, I'm going to pray right now, and I believe God yes. that whoever you are, wherever you are, pastor, leader, Christian, a worker, a connect group leader, in the name of Jesus, yes, amen. greater is he that is in you yes, Lord. than he that is in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Suck and there is no right. weapon that is formed against you, right. says the Word of God, that can prosper. Yes. That even though the devil might try to come against us, one way, he, we will scatter him seven ways. Yes, the church is triumphant. Jesus said it will prevail against every attack. Yes. And so, Father, as we pray together today, yes, Jesus. we believe, God, that you will pour out your spirit, empowering every believer yes. to take on the weaponry that you've given us of praise yes, Lord. and of worship and of speaking the word of God, of prophesying, Jesus. declaring into the atmosphere, yes. over our churches, yes. into our nations. Jesus. And we praise you, Father, for yes. the victory and the strength Jesus. that you will put inside every one of us, yes, Lord. knowing that Jesus, the conqueror, yes, Jesus. Jesus. lives within our heart. Yes, Amen. Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus. We lift up all our pastors and Jesus. their families yes, in Lord. the persecuted regions yes, of Lord. C3 Global. Lord, we lift them up to you, all other pastors who are in the in the vice of, of, of a difficult time in the West Western countries, Lord, we, we lift them up to you. Jesus. We yes, Lord. For Jesus. Fresh Jesus. oil of your anointing. <laughs> yes, Lord. To come down upon them, even as they're sitting in their homes and in their offices right now. We pray, Lord, for that sense of purpose. Yes, Lord. And moving forward to be very real into each of our leaders mm. and pastors mm. and their Jesus. families in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, we do. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Richard, Amen. why don't you lead us in prayer today? Father, we want to thank you for so many brave saints right across the world. 260 million Christians are in persecuted countries. Last year alone, 3,000 lost their f lives because they believe in Christ. Mm. Over 3,000 churches were burnt and busted up. But the gospel advances. Yes. And we have some of the most magnificent people in C3 right across the world. Exactly. We pray for Nada and Khalud in Jordan. We pray for Sadef and Asher in Pakistan. We pray yes, Lord. for Begla and Anna in Armenia right in the midst of a civil war. Lord, they are continuing to preach. We pray for Yuvjani and Sleplana and Asnava and Anara. Lord, we pray for our wonderful church in Baghdad, Lord yes, God. Lord. For Farid and Sua and their beautiful children, yes, Lord. Phoebe and, and Malak. <coughs> And Federer, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would come upon them. Lord, we thank you that they are seeing miracles. Yes, they Lord. are seeing signs and wonders. They are starting new churches. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. The gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. These are days that the, the gospel is needed across the planet. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray that you would protect these beautiful saints, Lord oh Jesus. God, in places like Egypt. 
relationship with Mina and Christina, Lord, in Cairo, in Menya, in Alexandria, the great city of Alexandria, once a centre of Christianity. Lord let God. it be so again. Yes. Lord, let the winds of the Holy Spirit blow across our beautiful, beautiful pastors and servants. Lord, we stand with yes. them. Open the heavens, Lord yes, God. Lord. Yes. Provide for them. Glory to God. Paul was con convicted of the sense of preaching the gospel where the, pre where the gospel had never been preached before. Right. Let it be so. Yes, Lord. And let it be done with supernatural Jesus power, name. Lord God. Yes. A word from heaven will change everything, yes, God. Lord. We pray, strengthen them. Be with them. Lord God. In Jesus' name, we stand with yes. our brothers and sisters in some of the toughest places in the world. Be with them. Anatoly and Olga, Lord yes, God, and Mikhail and Marina and Natalie and, and Valeria, yes, Lord God, right across the world, Lord Jesus, where it is tough and strengthen them, we pray. Yes, Lord, In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Go ahead, Kathy. Jesus, we just Father. ask for a great strengthening yes, of our Lord. churches. Oh, Lord, we just thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen. Lord, we ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to come. Lord, we ask for yes, salvations in these churches, Amen. in Serbia, in Tajikistan, in Kyrgyzstan, in Kazakhstan, in Russia. We ask for salvations in an outpouring of your Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. We bless you, Jesus, and we thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Amen. Thank Lord, you, Jesus. pour down your Holy Jesus. Spirit Jesus. on these areas. And we believe God, Father, that right now, Lord, many of these people who are in, in difficult circumstances yes, will find themselves growing strong Sometimes, Lord, you don't deliver us out of the fire, but we actually Amen. go through the fire Amen. and discover Jesus in the middle of it. We become stronger because of it. And I would say to all the pastors and all the leaders and all the Christians who are here right now, do not think that the life on earth as a Christian is going to get easier. Do not think that persecution will be just limited to the Middle East or yeah, the other right. areas in Northern Africa around the world. Believe it, when we move into these last days, we will see a rising tide of anti-Christian feeling, of churches being attacked. But this is our finest hour. I mean, this is when the church will rise to heights it's never been before. I mean, and the great power of the Holy Spirit Jesus, is going to touch this Jesus, generation. Jesus, In the name of Jesus, Jesus, Heavenly Father, we believe, God, Jesus, that you will cause an outpouring Jesus, by the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And every Everybody said, Amen. 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 Now listen, we want you to feel that in this conference there is an offering of some kind. They said to, they said to me, because uh, like, I said, look, when is the offering? And they said, we're not, we're not taking one. And I said, why not? You know, you can't have a gathering when we don't bring something to the Lord. And so, uh, so we, we thought about it and we believed that we, we should make an offering. Yes and a call to action in this conference yes. to support those Christians and those churches in the Middle East who are persecuted. And you'd be able to uh, give yes. online right now or sometime during the next half of this day to uh, the C3 Reach family, part of our C3 church yes. around the world so that right. you'll be able to give and give generously yep. and stand with brothers and sisters who are in difficult times. Thanks for doing that, Richard awesome. and Thanks Kathy. So Privileged to be in this family. Thank you so much. It's on the screen. The link is on the screen. So please make sure that you take a, get your phone out and take that QR code. Yeah. We're going to. And now we're going to worship. We are. We are going now to worship the Lord with Hope City KL. What an awesome worship. Yeah, that was amazing. So come mm, on. Let's, super anointed. Let's, wherever you are, let's just stand to our feet and let's really enter into this time of worship. <laughs> well, so. if you're sitting down, you don't have to stand to your feet. You <laughs> anyway, <know. laughs> let's worship together. Amen. Amen. Good. Into my 
Yes, it chases me fiercely and relentlessly, even for a sinner like me. I cannot hide from your love, and I fall to my knees for. Father's love, like nothing I've ever known, will never fail, never change. Oh, it's the Father's love, like nothing I've ever known, will never fail, never change.
Hey, some incredible worship there from our C3 Global family, the team in Hope City KL. And uh, I know so many joining us from around the globe who's got fond memories from our global conferences in KL. Make sure you're letting us know on Zoom, on the YouTube chat there as well. Let's keep it live and loud in all of those platforms. Absolutely. You know, we just want to welcome you to the next session. It's absolutely wonderful to have you here. I don't know about you, but it has been like a breath of fresh air. Absolutely. The whole day. For those of you we haven't met, my name's Melissa, this is Nick, and we just want you to have the best time right now in um, in our global conference. We are from C3 Bill Conan in Canberra, Australia. We know uh, there's a whole bunch of you joining us. We've got yeah. Katmandu uh, joining That's us. We have amazing. Cairns as well. Yeah. Our friends are right across New Zealand yeah. and Australia. Yeah. It's either lunchtime or afternoon coffee totally. break. Yeah, I can even see the guys in Canada still on our Zoom, so wave. Yeah. Yeah, Lauren and Kelly, it's night, it's past right? your bedtime. It's been so good having you guys with us on the East Coast there. West Coast is dinner time. Most of Europe and uh, Africa are uh, asleep right now. They'll be joining us a little bit Except, later on. you know, if you're like me, I was a nurse in the old days and did shift work. So There you go. The hey to our, our, our shift workers across Europe and Africa. And uh, around Asia, you're having your morning coffee. So it's so totally good to that. have you with us. So much ahead of us in this afternoon session uh, for us over here in Australia. We're going to throw now to an amazing conversation uh, that James Murray is going to have with Pastor Phil and Chris, letting us uh, have some insights into the emotional side of leadership. And we're just so thankful for leaders who are real, uh, who are willing to share uh, the, the ups and downs of the journey. And it's such a privilege to follow uh, Pastor Phil and Chris. Hey guys, well welcome back and I am really excited about this session. I know that you are and if you are excited, please let us know on the chat wherever you're watching this. But this is uh, this is really special time. I feel like I feel like Dr. Phil right now, not the Dr. Phil, but a type of Dr. Phil in this oh, moment. That's cute. Because uh, I'm actually going to have a interview moment uh, with two of my favorite people, Pastor Phil and Chris Pringle. So could you welcome them by applause on the uh, Zoom there or wherever you're watching it? Yes. Look at them, look at them all go. So good. But uh, Pastor Phil and Chris, so good to have you on, not my show, but on this show. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Pleasure Love to be it. here with you, James. Oh, so Love good. it. Yes. You guys look fantastic. I actually have a theory about Pastor Phil and Chris that they actually they actually sleep in a massive, um, you know, you have those airtight containers, right. you know, for food, <laughs> yes. and, and you actually sleep in one because it just it keeps in the freshness. So that's why you, you really age. Oh, that's so you nice. Like that? Yeah, yeah. Did you like that? Oh, yeah, lock in the fresh. Okay, I anyway, love too you. Too much? Anyway. Yeah. But um, okay, so uh, fresh. the goal of this this time together is actually to get vulnerable, talk about different parts of life, leadership, ministry, uh, which we will get into, but I need to, we just need to kind of start a bit lighter first. Would you agree? Let's just start a little bit lighter. Is that wherever fine? You want. Where, yeah. Wherever I want? Yeah. Dangerous. Okay. Lighter. So, <laughs> I like that lighter. Yeah, well, lighter. I want to ask the question, which I think every, all of our viewers want to know out there. <laughs> they want to know this question. If a movie was made about your lives, okay, oh. a movie, Hollywood blockbuster, <laughs> Okay, who would you like? What Hollywood actor would you like to play you? What Hollywood actor would you say, this, I would love them to play mm. me. I think they would appropriately play me well. What do you think? Right, Chris. Any, what? Goldie Chris. Horn. Goldie Horn? Yeah. Would anyone else agree? Can anyone else see that? Goldie Horn as... Or, or um, the girl from MASH. The girl from MASH? <laughs> you know, the, the, the doctor. No, nobody can remember yeah, that. No, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I am 67. Mash is still on every okay, it's Goldie been Horn. Last 50 years. Goldie I love Horn. her. I think Goldie she's Horn, yes. she's a wonderful actress. All I right. think she could do me well. Yes, she, that, I think I could see that. I could see that. Pastor <laughs> Phil, uh, who, who do you think would play you? Oh, I know who I'd play. Come on, who? come oh, on, Pastor Chris, tell him. No, uh, Kevin Costner. <laughs> I was about to say that. You know, it's so interesting. He looks like him. Oh, he does. Okay, because I wanted to say that. If you can zoom in, I actually had a picture. Oh, this is okay. Can you oh, see this for the viewers that. at home? If you zoom oh, in, right. this it's is Phil. Pastor Phil, and, and look at it. Look at the hair. It's right. the hair oh. is amazing. Amazing. And, and really, like, <laughs> see, I've been, I've been through many generations oh of Pastor Phil. Uh, the nice short back and sides, yes. and now we've gone for this flowing approach. <gasps> it's approach. beautiful. He's Pastor amazing. Chris, you can see him on a horse, can't yes. you? Right through the yeah, I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's from. Uh, you know, Robin Hood. Yes, Prince of Peace. And Peace. I loved him in that. And, you know, like now I've got my own Robin Hood. You've got, 
you got your yes. own little Prince of Thieves. He doesn't ride a horse, <laughs> but hey? he does skip a, a boat. He that's does. good enough for he me. He does. Les, he really does. Mm, okay, so skipper. let's let's get amongst it. Um, just to you know, just just to right. jump into there. We only got a short amount of time together, <laughs> but yes. um, ministry. How, how many years has it been in ministry now for both of you? Pretty well, 50. Yeah, 50, 50 years. 50, 50 next years. year. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah 49, yeah, 50. 49. Wow. Right from the day we got born again, pretty much yeah. we were doing ministry stuff because within <laughs> six weeks of being born again, we, we rented this very large house. Mm. Uh, and we just brought in every person who was on the street and drug addicts. We were holding meetings in that house. Yep. Wow. I didn't know the Bible that well at that stage. I mean, I had Noah walking on the water instead of wow. building an ark and Abraham was rising from the dead and uh, <laughs> go, yeah. I was well, quoting well. from the book of Hezekiah. Right. I mean, it was yeah. just... Uh, <laughs> you sound like Pastor James Edwards, actually. <laughs> yeah, That's right. bad. I shouldn't say that. He had okay. Jesus and... Um, People were attracted to the Jesus in Phil. Yeah, right. As I was. Yeah, beautiful. Am. And, and, and over the oh. last, so that's, that's 50 years. Yeah. So that 40 years now is a movement that yes. you had those, let's right. say, nine or 10 years before that. Yeah, that's right. Over the course of 40 to 50 years of ministry, mm -hmm. um, there's going to be some disappointments. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some frustrations. Yep. yep. And so I'd love to ask you, Pastor Chris, yep. how have you journeyed through those moments of frustration and disappointment in, in ministry life? Yeah, well, uh, not very well always. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of tears, a lot of questions. I think sometimes yes. you have to live with unresolved questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember really early on when we were in the middle of a big trial and it was affecting me personally and I'd cry a lot. And Phil said to me, babe, you know, stop crying. Like, take it as a burden from the Lord, and uh, and and give it to Him. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, I, I'm going to do that. Because mm -hmm. crying alone doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. So from that experience, I um, learned to take all those pressures and that to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I learned, don't just cry, but cry out. Wow. And wow. And okay, so always. In the midst of every various trial or emotional turmoil, um, I found like two things that have that have been my stay and been like a stake in the ground to mm. keep me mm. on purpose mm. and on into you know moving forward in the call yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. In that moment of prayer, when I've just like cried out, mm. the Lord is always like you know how some people say, "Oh, the Lord speaks to me," mm. it, like every day He's got a word for you and everything. I've found that He has only ever really spoken to my heart through the Word of God, wow. and I get a promise, mm. and that promise just goes into my spirit, and then out from that promise, I can mm. uh, cry out effectively mm. and get through. Um, the various difficulties mm. that we've had. Mm. Um, that would be one way. That's huge. And secondly, I've um, depended greatly on great friends. Mm. You know, like there's always been somebody that's come into my world and we've yeah. uh, cried out together. Wow. Uh, that's the second can, can thing. Can I sorry, interrupt you for a moment there? Because I find that I, I want to ask that about friendship. Okay, yeah. so within ministry, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of senior pastors out there. And sometimes to be vulnerable and to find close friends, you know, because there's a fear of maybe they'll misuse the information right. you're giving. And, and there could be that, you know, yeah. I, I don't want to get hurt and I don't want them to use it against. How did you find that? How did you find the, the people that you could call friends? What did that look like? And how did you get to that point? Well, I guess you just don't pick a confidant friend off the street mm. or you don't choose them because they've got a fabulous personality. Mm. There are people who are there for you. Mm. Um, and in my life, I've had friends that have been beside me and with me. Mm. And um, I, in particular, I'd have to say in those early days when the trials were really vexing, when mm. we were waiting to get permission for the land build here, yeah. mm. we had terrible attacks from which covens and calls at night and oh, I was yeah, very wow. very fearful mm. um, Heli actually was an incredible um, person beside me I was anxious and uh, emotional uh, outwardly and she mm. was calm and quiet and it was a great combination for us wow. to get through those battles through mm. uh, together in prayer mm. and then I remember one other time um, 
Do you want me to keep talking? Please, no, wanna... yeah, I love this. Um, it was a very similar trial as well. We were actually away overseas, and a mm. very dear friend of mine was extremely ill, and wow. I couldn't get to be with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was like, I could, this was a burden on my heart, mm. and I was feeling emotionally, like, really stretched. And a fellow minister asked if she could see me and just to pray with me and maybe share something with me. Wow. And we sat together just like Phil and I are now, and she shared that wonderful scripture and a picture. She said, I see uh, from Psalm 23, yeah. he prepares a, a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Yeah, lovely. And she said, I see the Lord preparing special food for you, Chris, so that you are sustained in this season. And then as you're sustained, you're going to help that friend. Wow. And wow. do you know what? That scripture still speaks to me. Mm. And I know that if, if I invite Christ to be at that table with me, mm. he's going to give me that food. Wow. It's going to sustain me, the Beautiful. food that sustains through every... Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you've had them too. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Right. And that wasn't just because, you know, I was constipated. <laughs> uh, you know, I think there Equally are Equally painful, yes. There are terrible <laughs> sorrows in the ministry. Wow. And... You have to equip yourself mm. um, for them yes. and not be naive mm. um, about this is a war. Yeah. And we have to fight the good fight. Mm. Hey, babe. It's so true. Exactly. Your yeah. turn. You know, the point about friendship is uh, deeply important. Yeah. You, you actually need someone to bleed with. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Jesus went into the garden with three people he felt he could trust that moment to. Mm, mm. They didn't quite live up to all they should have been. However, sure. yeah. he didn't want to do it alone. No. And so when we're facing our really difficult times, yeah. thankfully we have had close friends. And I think uh, yes. most of you know our great friends have been with us, all of them really, mm. have been with us for more than 30, Long 40 run. years. Yes, yep. that's right. And... <laughs> I think uh, if you eat together and vacation together yeah. <laughs> and then work together, yeah. it actually pans out to being mm. life with friends. Mm. The worst, one of the, it's if true. you ask any leader, the worst uh, trial that you can experience often is, um, I would say it's betrayal. Yes. Where you've had your yes. trust in somebody. Mm. And, and most leaders I know are very loyal people. Yes, yes. And they think that everybody's going to be just like that yeah. to mm. them. That's right. But then when that doesn't happen, that really cuts deep mm. because you want friends. Mm. And then when that happens, I've watched people close up mm. and not let themselves wow. open up two mm -hmm. friends and then do life in a very isolated, mm. lonely fashion, mm. which only mm. leads to depression. Which is, I feel like that yeah. seems to be a common thread in ministry from what I can observe, is that yes. there's a lot of ministers out there who are very lonely. Mm -hmm. They're it's lonely the because they have, you know, maybe for that reason, I don't want to get rejected, I don't want to get hurt, someone betrayed my loyalty. But you're saying that, yeah, that friendship and yep. forging those friendships along the way. Yep. Would you say it, it took a long time to get to that point? Or? I think the challenge is to find friends who can retain respect while they become familiar with you. Yeah. Wow. And uh, yep. huge. And, and so all of our friends have no lessening of respect. They don't treat us yeah. with familiarity. Yes. And if they did, I'd talk to them. Mm hmm but I don't need to because they're mature, yeah. yes. secure people. Mm -hmm. They get us. And they can say, Pastor Phil and Chris, in the appropriate moments. Yes. And when we're in private, say, hey, Phil and Chris. Yes. You know, they don't yeah. have to. Uh, but Beautiful. they have found that being up close to us mm -hmm. has not compromised that yeah. ability to work under uh, as part of a leadership team. Mm -hmm. Yes, so and big. Um, look, the other night, James, um, Phil and I sat down, we watched the four sections of the C3 documentary right, that's yeah, online, yeah. all together, one Beautiful. after the other. And I think that when we saw all the wonderful pastors and leaders who, who came into C3 alone and lonely, maybe having been rejected by a church mm. uh, in the past, mm. um, it, it kind of was like the ah-ah uh -uh moment. Mm. This is why we are a global movement. Mm. Because there are 
are people that just need to come into a family and be accepted and loved. Yes. And I think mm. if we've exhibited that, then I feel like these 40 years have been have been everything. Absolutely. Have been yeah. the reason. Let me, let me say this too. Trial. We yeah. would put that above the numbers. Yeah. Oh, definitely. We, yes. would, we would say that that yeah. is more important than a thousand churches, a million worshippers and all mm. that. Yeah. Although those, those are very important, mm. but uh, it's not at the expense of. Yes, exactly. The health of relationships mm -hmm. yeah. that will do anything to anybody, will raid their churches, will do all <laughs> sorts of things just to make sure we're going to get these mm. numbers. Mm. I think that's a ridiculous way to approach it. I yeah. think we should yeah. be fellow disciples first. Mm -hmm. yes. And out of that comes a, a high quality fruitfulness. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's so obvious. It's so evident in the in our movement. You know, I think obviously getting together like this for our global conference, which looks a little different this time around. But in previous times, it feels like a family reunion, yeah. doesn't it? Getting together oh, with everyone so and, and just yeah. having fun. I've you know, missed that this year, but we'll come back. Anyone else <laughs> grateful for that? Then we're going to come back. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, One day. Yes. We'll, be able to, we'll be able to do the, the big hug, Pastor Chris, without oh, 1.5 meters. I know. Isn't that Where awesome? How to do the big hug, hug for social distancing? I know, I know. Well, you just do it. You just with connection That's and right. with your words and yeah. with your you know people feel your heart they do and and i think that that isn't about being physically close mm. you can have that heart for people um, with a with a text or a letter or Absolutely. a FaceTime, mm -hmm. it comes through like. And also, hey, the Holy Spirit yes. is not just contained in the church of a building mm -hmm. or our conferences. Mm -hmm. He can just get out. Yeah, you know, that's he's, right. He's the, through he's the Holy Spirit, yes, yeah, right. he gets right. through Zoom. Yeah, he can totally. touch people. <laughs> so, yeah. so let me ask you this. Okay, so part of the journey of you know 40, 50 years of ministry is definitely a large part of that is taking care of your soul. You have to. And I think a lot of the times, and um, Pastor Phil and you know, we've had discussions of that, this along the way in different um, kind of uh, quieter settings where we've talked about longevity and ministry and different things like that. And that's definitely a common thread uh, in church history of guys who will burn out. And because I've, I've got a really great spiritual life, but my physical or my soul life's quite lacking. It's almost like I felt like if my spiritual life was awesome, then that would matter. God would take care of the rest. But we're both body and soul, right? We need to have those things working together. So let me ask you this question. Uh, how have you managed to keep your soul in a healthy place over these last 50 years? What practices like, let's even get really practical things that have helped you. And for those who are out there watching this, yeah. pastors, so they can do the long run. What's some practical soul care things? It's, it's, a, it's a super important question. Mm -hmm. And if I think if a person's theology is messed up, mm. they kind of ignore their soul as though it's soulish. Yeah. Yes. Or it's of the flesh. Right. So those sorts of concepts are uh, they're messed up because mm. if there are things about the soul that are beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Art, music, food, mm. fellowship, mm -hmm. yes. laughter, all mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. yes. And about your body. Mm -hmm. Just because it's flesh doesn't mean it's evil. No. It's the sins of the flesh that are evil. Wow, yeah. true. But your flesh, yeah. like for physical, the experience of wind on your face, the sun on your back, oh, the oh. salt water on your skin. Oh. You know, I mean, all the coffee, sailing, on, your, the coffee on your lips. <laughs> Anyone else? Coffee on oh, your lips. Come on. Uh, friends Don't around your table. It's true. Yeah. All, yeah. all of that is, yeah. is, is a huge part of our salvation. Mm. And if you ignore those things, it's to your peril. I mean, when, when Elijah was depressed, mm. super depressed, mm -hmm. he he started to run away to the mountains mm. and he was going to meet God there. But on the way, an angel cooked some food for him. It said, rise and eat. How beautiful. So good. And it was carbs too. Yeah. And that's encouraging. <laughs> yeah, he said, Come on, let's be said, honest. The journey's too great for you. <laughs> but he'd been walking a long way. Right. So yeah. they, cooked him another, they cooked him another meal. Oh, yeah. He did. I mean, and that, and the guy was, so what, and, and he had to sleep. He slept mm. and slept and slept. Beautiful. And so to look after your body, mm. And to look after your soul yeah. is super important. Otherwise, there's big f facets of our life that are missing. However, let me say this just as a caveat, because I've watched guys who've never been allowed to watch television in the illegalistic Christianity, wow. never allowed to have a boat, never allowed to do all sorts of things, wow. come to Christ no and movies. just splurge on it right. until it actually becomes a problem. Right, right. 
the pendulum so, swings out yeah. the other way. Yeah. So you don't yeah. want to let you know a crutch become a leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is a good. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. I'm going to still use it today yeah, because I want you to get glory in heaven for it. I think I got that yeah. from my son Joseph. Oh, did you? Oh. I think I did. No, yeah. no, he did. I gave it to him. <laughs> right. no, carry on. Yes. Okay. But but definitely, I think oh, that love um, you, Joe. You, you, you want to make sure that, uh, that everything's done. You know, like in moderation. Mm. Like uh, drinking wine. We've had people join the movement thinking, "Oh, you guys! Mm. Wow! Finally, I found a place that I can." And they mis have misunderstood yes. liberty yes. and thought it's licentiousness. Wow. It's not. So true. Li uh, so true. Liberty is not license. Mm. It's no. a freedom to enjoy life. Yes. Without the forbidding sense of a religiosity, but without the extravagant sense mm. of being ridiculous and loose. Yeah. So true. Mm. So true. Pastor Chris, can yes. I ask you this then? I hope so. Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> for for, uh, you, for uh, you then, for, for your soul. Okay, mm. so yeah. these years of ministry. Yeah. Can I ask you about, you know, most most church activity happens on a Sunday. It's not restricted to, absolutely. And we've got to right, get that, I think, yes. in our mentality more yeah. now than ever. Yeah. Sunday is our church day. Sunday is the big day of gathering. Yeah. Let, let me ask you, your Monday. Yeah. What, what have you done on your Monday over the years to take care of the soul? What have you found as a, yeah. a thing that's helped you to unwind no. and, you know, keep that soul healthy? Housework. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> the girls don't Pastor like Phil. Uh, 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 No, I mean, look, OK, so practical things. We, um, I've, I bought a bike during COVID I've and I this. like to yes. go around the lake and yep. sometimes I, t I go with a friend, but that's wonderful to, to get away. Mm. I think, look, Sometimes you just need to stop mm. and be in the quiet. Mm. Like sometimes you need to do less. Love that. So love that. Monday, if we call Monday our Sabbath, Correct. which is what we do do. Yes. <laughs> Did I just say do do? Yeah, do, -do. That's <laughs> then, fine. then, um, then I think you know, and a quiet mm. meal. Mm. Don't even have to cook it. Maybe. Right. Monday. Yes. You just get you're you're resting your body and your soul and even your spirit for mm. uh, a week or a season ahead. Yes. I think we have to learn to rest. Yes. And whatever form that, that takes, I would want to encourage our pastors mm. because, you know, burnout happens when there's no rest emotionally. So true. Uh, even spiritually. Yes. Because you can burn out by just thinking, I've got to do everything. I'm right. a man of God. I don't need to mm -hmm. rest. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go on a holiday. Oh, yes. annual leave. Yes. You, you wow. should be planning and yes. dreaming Plan time out. Because mm -hmm. it gives your mind something to look forward oh. to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when you've done it, it gives your mind something to remember. Yes. So, so that yeah. that cutting in to your schedule, the sense of this is never going to end is one of the, one of the highest causes of burnout. When you. you've lost control over your timing mm. and you think, this is just relentless yeah. and I can't see a break coming yeah. up. So as soon as I see a break, I find energy for today. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and I have to say family. Yes. Um, well, now, of course, all our kids are, you know, we're empty nesters. Yes. Yes. But to be in connection with our grandkids. Beautiful. Uh, that heal, that renews my soul. Mm. And I well, right now this year, it's been more FaceTime with our yeah, granddaughters yeah. in LA. And yeah. then when I can, I get the boys up. So good. You know, to, yeah. to, they're coming to have a sleepover for a few nights so next lovely. week. That's lovely. So there are things, family refreshes. Yes. And also friends, just mm. around the table, mm. just having a, you know, a cheese platter, looking out, looking, looking out at the horizon. Yeah. Just it. relaxing. So good. Um, that renews my soul. So beautiful. Yeah. Pastor Chris, as we finish, um, I would love for you to pray for the pastors really quickly, everyone watching, just for that spirit of rest. I know it's because yeah. 20 seconds left, but I think that spirit of rest needs to be on everyone. Amen. And so would you do that? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, James. Lord, I just thank you. I pray for our pastors right now who are watching, those who are maybe feeling that they need a refreshment of the soul. It's mm. been a big year. Mm. It's probably been a big decade for many. Lord, I just pray that you'll send your Holy Spirit and minister to our guys and Lord that they will also begin to dream and reimagine what rest looks like mm. for them yes. for their uh, marriage for their family 
and maybe just make that a priority mm. and to put things in place and to dream and to actually imagine a holiday and to put aside time to have uh, a Sabbath mm. with their families and friends. Mm. Lord, I just thank you. What an incredible privilege it is to serve you. But Lord, we know that even you had to get away to a quiet place mm. and rest and pray to get away from the crowds. And so Lord, give us wisdom today. I just pray in the name of Jesus Amen. that the big hug will go out to every couple and every hearer yes. today of this session in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Fantastic. <laughs> well, it's so good to have everyone join us for this session. Did you like it? It was amazing. If you want more content like this, go on uh, Pastor Phil's new podcast on leadership. And we're going to talk about topics on there like rest and longevity. So make sure you uh, click the link for that and follow all the prompts to, uh, to get involved in that podcast. But right now, we're going to throw it back to our MCs. Thanks for joining us. My goodness, that was so good. Now, what Incredible I got session. out of that was that we can eat takeaway, honey, right. and definitely carbs are back on the menu. And I'm taken for some long service leave. I don't know about you, but that's what I got out of that session. Perfect. <laughs> I, I learned that uh, perhaps uh, Pastor Phil and Chris have some secret cryo chamber. Right. But uh, I want to let you True in that. on whose real question is how does James Murray get younger uh, mm. every year, like a Benjamin Button effect? <laughs> I've discovered today he is entirely powered by wild berry skittles. So yes, that might help true. some of you out there. Uh, so good to see our friends uh, right across in Amman through to Absolutely. Launceston Amazing. with us. I've been texting people that I know on the Zoom link, trying to get them to look down at their phones instead of at the screen. And we've you have caught a bunch of very, you. very naughty. And pastors, you know what? I hope that you're engaging the way that you want your church to engage on Sunday virtually. So lots of chat, Ouch. lots of YouTube. <laughs> it's true, right? It's true. So make sure you're on there doing lots of chatting. And you know what? What a special time we have celebrating Absolutely. 40 years. Absolutely. 40 years of C3 and of incredible leadership by Pastor Phil and Chris. And yeah. the wisdom that we've just heard and shared is, is so vital. It really, it's what powers our movement. And I'm so thankful not only that Pastor Phil and Chris have been you know, leading uh, yeah. for 40 years, but they've been calling others yep. uh, into the journey. Exactly. And but, but at the same time, being real, yeah. sharing how to do this well yeah. together. That's the beauty of our global family. Emily. And, you know, 20 years ago, it was us that they said yes to. You can do Crazy. it. Go for it. I know right now, right across YouTube and our Zoom rooms, there are yeah. pastors and leaders saying thank you, Pastor Phil and Chris, yeah. uh, for calling us out into the destiny that God has for us. Absolutely. A lot of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the yes that Pastor Phil and Chris uh, bestowed upon us. Absolutely. And, you know, we actually get to hear a great story now we from do. around our global uh, churches from C3 Damascus. So we're going to throw to Richard Green who's going to introduce the next story. Hi C3 Church Global, I'm Pastor Richard Green, uh, the leader of C3 Church Ride and also look after C3 Reach, our church planters. And we're going to share a story, we're going to hear a testimony from our amazing C3 Reach pastor, church planter in Syria, Pastor Musa. So please, uh, I hope this inspires you like it does me. Hi, I'm Pastor uh, Musa from C3 of Damascus. We are proud uh, of uh, Jesus' work in our country, uh, despite the circumstances, uh, the difficult circumstances uh, we are going uh, through, uh, which made uh, many people um, uh, lack, uh, lack the, the most basic needs of life. Uh, the last story uh, that happened uh, with us uh, on Dutty four days ago, uh, going, uh, two uh, young men, uh, uh, one of uh, 16 years and his brother uh, uh, 18 years old. Uh, their uh, uh, father uh, has uh, lost his job uh, since March and uh, they have uh, had uh, to sell, to sell uh, last electronic mach ma uh, machine in the house. Uh, it's a watching machine uh, uh, for uh, 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 so that uh, uh, they can spend uh, their daily, uh, daily uh, needs without that. Uh, I meet uh, uh, the two uh, going, uh, uh, the two young men and uh, 
uh, express it uh, uh, to them um, uh, my sadness uh, because uh, their family had uh, to sell the uh, watching machine. Uh, and I took uh, them and uh, told them uh, that Jesus who uh, takes, uh, takes care of the lilies of the uh, field uh, and uh, the birds of uh, the sky will not abandon uh, uh, them. And he uh, came uh, to be our uh, savior. After that, I take them uh, to library uh, and uh, buy for them uh, many uh, things uh, for uh, their, uh, schools, uh, their school. Um, the, the small um, young man uh, cried for that and he uh, told me no one uh, do that in, in, in our life like you. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I answer him, I answer him, uh, no one helped us like Jesus. And uh, they decided to be uh, come uh, disciples uh, of uh, Jesus in C3. God bless you.
be able to worship virtually like this. What an incredible song from C3 NYC there and uh, that amazing story from Pastor Musa uh, from one of our churches in Syria. What an amazing global family we get to be a part of. Oh, hey? it's so true. And you know, I was, I was elbowing you, honey, and saying, we got to do that song in our church. Incredible. That was amazing. We love that. And you know what I love at the moment is we actually even have translators translating this Into for people Bahasa all over right the... now. Isn't that amazing that we can actually Phenomenal. do that. So, hey guys, I hope you're having a good day. Just such a brilliant time together. Now we have a really special treat. We just had a little bit of a, of a taste of uh, NYC there and uh, we're going to throw uh, in a moment to the revelator, Pastor Hi, Mark. Mark Kelsey. Uh, <laughs> and it must be such a joy uh, for you, Mark, to see the fruit there uh, of what you guys began and is now uh, really being championed uh, by your yeah. son and daughter-in-law over there. Uh, incredible. Mark Kelsey, our keynote uh, for this session. Going to be such a great time. Thanks, Nick and Mel. <laughs> so good to see you. And uh, thanks for that uh, shout out there. Uh, but really, uh, first of all, it's uh, Josh and Georgie doing all the hard work there. And it really began with our incredible pastors, Pastor Phil and Chris, which of course uh, we're celebrating that. And of course, 40 years is absolutely amazing. I'm just looking at these screens and just, I love this. Just so many friends, uh, so many great connections, years and years of developing relationship. I see Joel and Emma waving at me there, right there, hey guys. Uh, and what I love about our movement, that it's uh, not just a, it's not a denomination, even the word movement, really it is a global family. Uh, and I love this sense of unity, but diversity uh, that we have as, as that family, it's amazing. So um, this message I've called uh, an unsurprised God, unsurprised God. It's a short little devotional to really unpackage a thought around uh, the New Testament and the gospel. Uh, particularly in these, these times, which are obviously very challenging, but who knows that God is a God who moves even most through the most challenging times. And uh, He is not surprised by what's happening. There is no mystery to Him that, that, it, that has come upon the scene that He is not aware of. And uh, anyway, uh, give me a wave if you're thankful that He is not surprised by what's happening right now. Okay, I'm hearing, seeing a lot of waves, that's great. He is unsurprised. However, what can happen for us is that we can feel surprised. But I just want to say this today is that because He's unsurprised, He has actually prepared us with the gospel. The gospel isn't something that's recent. He has prepared us in this gospel. And I love the scripture in 2 Peter in the first chapter there. And it begins to unpackage this concept uh, and, and many of you are familiar with this. It says uh, he's, he has already prepared a way for us. He has created a divine nature. He has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. So in the, in the gospel is this preparation that we need for whatever season we're going through, which is an amazing thing. And uh, what I love about uh, the gospel is this, is that it's, the gospel is a personal gospel but it's not an individual gospel. And the moment it is personal, it means that it relates also to our relationships with other people. Now, even though it's personal, it, it immediately affects the way we relate to other people. And our personal transformation automatically in that gospel means that it transforms the way we relate to other people. So I'm going to give you... Um, a uh, five quick uh, concepts in the gospel that relate to the that relate to this concept. If he, if he if he God is unsurprised, if he is not affected by this, then and he has created the gospel for us. Then it shapes the way we relate to one another, and uh, and hidden in the gospel is these five things that God has given us. Okay, number one, the gospel has allowed us to be reconciled to one another. A scripture in Ephesians chapter two that has really shaped 
uh, my view of life in so many ways. I'm going to read from Ephesians 2, 14. It says this, For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. And later on it says, His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity and in, in, in his body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. It's interesting in the, in the, in the era we're living in right now is that we, uh, life is becoming more and more polarized. Polarized politically, polarized socially, polarized in, in, in so many different ways. What I love about the gospel is that it gets rid of all polarizing and we now have a gospel view. And it's an amazing thing that as we have that gospel view, our relationships and perceptions of other people change. Two things are removed in the cross. One is God's judgment of us, but also our hostility towards others. And I have this conviction, and the scriptures are very clear about it, is that uh, the gospel isn't complete until that horizontal access is actually complete. And that is the first bit, is that the vertical axis, that our connection with God and His judgment of us is, is now removed and we live in that grace, which is awesome. But this, the second part of the cross is that horizontal axis, which means that our relationships with other people, that hostility that we have, if it's people from other, uh, other parts of the world or other ideologies, that hostility is now removed and now we can live reconciled lives with one another, which is an incredible thing. So God, in the gospel, reconciliation takes place. The second of these things is that, that the gospel changes the way we regard one another. I love, um, you know, the, the, uh, the Pharisees came to Jesus and tried to trip him up on aspects of the law. And of course, we may know that the law, there were 614 laws uh, that the Pharisees tried to adhere to. And they said to Jesus, which is the most important law? And he, he boiled it right down to this very simple concept. Basically, he said, love God and love one another. And he boiled it down to this fact that it's really the love of God and the love of each other that synthesizes. In fact, he said this thing is that all the law hinges or hangs on that concept down into those very simple commandments, love God and love one another. The third thing is that the gospel shapes the way we relate to one another. I, I love the passage in Philippians chapter two. And it's interesting, it's actually talking about the way Jesus lived his life, the way he related to one another, uh, to other people. And, it's, and it says this in verse three, Philippians two, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And then the next verse, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Oh my gosh. So here, here is the encouragement of Paul to us that as we relate to one another, that, that we are inspired to relate to one another the same way Jesus did. And then in, the, in Philippians 2, it begins to unpackage what that means. It says later on, he made himself nothing. Even though he was God and equal with God, it says he made himself nothing. Now, we know that he, it wasn't that he was nothing. He was the most powerful uh, person in all the universe. And yet he made himself nothing. Why could he do that? He could do that because he knew he, who he was in God. And I think once we have firm identity in the cross and in the gospel and what God has made us, we can humble ourselves and humility is one of the key aspects of relationships. I believe that as the church begins to live out the spirit of humility, that spirit will pervade and affect people all over the world. Uh, and it's the spirit of humility that will change the way people perceive the cross, the gospel, the church and believers all around the world. Okay, number four. Obviously, they're, they're all ours 
that's the way I do things. Number four, the, four, the fourth R is releasing others. I, I, ah, oh man, I'm so convinced that we need to see other people. The gospel isn't just about our lives. It's not just about even just relating well to one another. It's our ability as not just leaders, but disciples of Christ to be disciples of other people in Christ. And, and, and I, you know, I love the fact that someone saw us. And then, of course, the, the next part is who are we seeing? Who are we releasing? It's interesting in Luke 3, Jesus had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. In Luke 4, he was released into that ministry in that famous passage that he quoted out of Isaiah 61. But in Luke 5, already he was discipling and engaging and releasing people and, and beginning to build a team. And I believe that represents what we're called to do as well. We're called to release people uh, into the ministry, and into the things of God. And it's a huge factor of the gospel. Imagine the church not just engaged, but activated and completely release activated church. Imagine every gift that, that is in the house of God alive. But I believe it takes us to see those people. And the fifth, uh, the fifth thing that I believe the gospel, hidden in the gospel uh, to our unsurprised God, the fifth thing is the reaching of others. And of course, the whole purpose of the releasing of others is that we would also reach others. Uh, it's the future others, the ones that are yet to come are on the outside of the church currently. Uh, and, you know, I remember for years, we were, I, we were, I'm sure you remember these prayers. God, give us a church without walls. Give us a church without walls where we break into the community and God says, I'll give you a church without walls. And boy, if, if any, any time there's a season that that is the case, it's right now, the, the walls are broken down. And I think in a good way, it's forced us as church community to really break into the community in a better way. I mean, even the online experience, the, the level of reach, the level of connection with our community is beyond what it ever has before. Uh, I did a study recently on, on Acts 2, but then, uh, which is incredible because Acts 2 is the day of Pentecost, but in Acts 8, it's the day of persecution. Uh, in Acts 2 is the church gathered, but in Acts 8, because of the dispersion, it was the church scattered. In Acts 2, it's the church established. In Acts 8, was the church expanded. In Acts 2, it's the Spirit poured out. But in Acts 8, it's the Spirit flowed through the church. In Acts 2, they came to Jerusalem. But in Acts 8, they went from Jerusalem. And I believe that right now, there is a season in which the church is breaking out of the current containment that it's had for years and breaking, not building community within the church, but breaking out into the community, whether it's online or our gathered service, whatever it is, I believe that God has called us to that, to a church that reaches others. And the gospel is a gospel of reach. The gospel is a gospel that penetrates into the community and out into the cities, the nations. That, and I, I just once again love seeing the faces and each one of you represent not just leadership, but community and cities that are currently being reached. But it's just the beginning of what God is going to do. So let's pray together and believe God for what He's about to do, what He is doing. The unsurprised God, I believe we need to be unsurprised Christians and living the gospel of relationship that works through every aspect of our life in God. Father in heaven, I thank you for every C3 church, every community, every church planted. I thank you, Lord, for the seeds within every one of our churches that are yet to be spawned into the communities and cities beyond where they currently are. And I declare life, growth, health, blessing, expansion, out into the communities uh, surrounding whatever churches we have. And we anticipate an Isaiah 54 experience that the place of our tent will be enlarged and we will see many, many more people reach for God. And I thank you, Lord, you give us the ability to live the gospel, to not be polarized in ideology, but to live the breadth and depth and heart and spirit and love of Christ in all of our places. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We always knew Mark Kelsey was uh, an impacting speaker, right? Now that is a session you will never forget. Totally. I feel like he went from the revelator 
Got this to the oh, radiator. I apologise <laughs> for my wife uh, right there, but I'm sure Mark's going to be using that for the next 12 months or so, wherever you see him. Uh, you know, this will be the session that you remember, right? That one. I got two theories. Uh, one, either someone on Zoom desperately needed a bathroom break, uh, or two, someone on Zoom, uh, you know, kind of let the toast burn in yeah, the background. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. You know who you are. Dob them in if you know who they are on our uh, Zoom breakouts uh, or on YouTube there. Speaking of which, there's some great stuff coming up there. There is. Actually, what we're going to do now is head into our breakout session. So C3 Pastors, all of you guys on Zoom, you have the link either in your email to go and join those Zoom rooms. And we are That's digging right. deep. We're going to be talking about emotionally healthy pastors. And I don't yeah. know about anyone else, but I'm needing some emotional health right now, right? This really? is a year. Yes. Yeah. Well, I know you don't. Yes. No, You're good. perfect. You, I mean, always. it's your birthday today. So you are... A year older than the movement. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. Yeah. We'll, we'll so, talk yes. about that later. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, so, so fast as you've got those links, you're actually going to need to jump out of uh, the current Zoom room and back in on that link. Yes. If you're having any troubles at all, uh, there's that email. You can contact uh, the global yeah, the team bottom. and they'll make it all nice and clear yeah. for you. YouTube uh, viewers, you've got an amazing oh, you. masterclass. Part two of church planning. We were hearing from the Pickens, the Kelseys and yeah. the Simpsons. We've got part two of, of that coming totally. up. Uh, and after those, after the breakout and the masterclass there, there's about an hour of free time and yep. then we'll be back for session four. Hey everyone, welcome back to the masterclass roundtable. But maybe let's talk about prayer yeah. for a minute. What did that look like when you hit the ground and, and what did you learn about God and yourself mm -hmm. as a church planner mm -hmm. when it came to prayer? It was huge for me. I can kick off. It was. Yeah. Um, I feel like God built my prayer life through us planting mm. the church. Mm. Like He completely right. changed what I thought a prayer life was. So, because wow. um, when you're getting um, doors closed, you know, mm. when you're trying to walk through doors, mm. all you've got, you guys know this, all we have is prayer, yeah. right? So we got told one venue in particular that we wanted to get into for one of our locations would never be an option for a church. It's yeah. like a, a gig venue, like a club. And um, and we were talking, and then Josh was like, it's not an option, because I met with the guy, and this church tried to get in there, and they couldn't get in there. And one day, I was just walking along with my stroller uh, with little baby Brooks, mm -hmm. and just, I was like, over it. I'm like, nah. Mm -hmm. Come on. And so I just went and laid my hands on the building, yeah. declared it to be like the house of God. And then every time I would, you know, meet up with someone for a coffee and walk with a stroller, mm -hmm. Um, as we're meeting up, I would stop and pray. And, you know, then he does his hustling because he's a great hustler. Yeah. Mm. He goes and chats to them. And, but now it's the musical of Williamsburg. It's where yeah. we meet oh, for Williamsburg. Yeah. So mm. I think just God was growing yeah. my faith individually. Mm. And same for our first apartment. It was yeah. a no. And then I just remember reaching out my hand to the building and just praying. So um, sounds awesome. so basic, yeah. but changed right. my life, mm. prayer. Right. You realize right. how important that is. Prayer was the only yeah. thing we really had because yeah. we, we couldn't really speak the language, still can't. <laughs> <laughs> but Are you trying I, to learn? I, I tried to. We don't yeah. It's just too hard for me. Yeah. Cantonese Mary, has like yeah. oh, nine, nine different nine tones, tones in Cantonese. So yeah, wow. yeah. Mandarin is four. So we have, yeah. but a lot of people can speak English in Hong Kong, so that was our saving yeah. grace. Yeah, but sure. when we first landed, I kind of thought to myself, well, what do we do? So mm. I just set my alarm for four o'clock every morning. I thought well, I'm going to spend my first two two hours in prayer, and so we just yeah. did that. Yeah. Uh, wow. I guess that's the spirit of C3. Amazing. And Pastor wow. Phil, he would always wake up early. So I, I said to the Lord, I'm going to do this for the first seven years, that's and uh, that seven years has now passed. <laughs> 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 but, but we did. We no, we sleep until eleven. <laughs> <laughs> now I just sleep in all day. <laughs> but we were just desperate for everything. Oh, we, so desperate. We needed people. We needed right. venue. We needed yeah, finance, finance. We just needed yeah. everything. Yeah. And but the prayer did it all. Yeah. 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 So but it was praying the Holy Spirit because He yeah. prays right. through you. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, yeah. you know, when you try to pray, you know, you're praying for things that you want when yeah. actually God, yeah. you know, He, yeah, he knows right. more. Yeah. Exactly. The Lord taught me so much through that prayer because often you start praying for things you want, mm. and then after a while. You, you stop praying for things and you just allow the Holy That's Spirit right. to pray through right. you. Yes. And 
the, I guess, revelation of praying in the Holy Spirit mm. yes. began to grow, you know, mm. that, that living water. Mm. That's right, yeah. exactly. It begins to, and the Holy Spirit mm. starts doing things that you don't even know. That's right. And then yeah. suddenly, out of the blue, prayers start getting answered. Yeah. 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 Some guy walks into the church and puts a big check in the offering, <laughs> you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the spirit of intimidation was like heavy for us. Where like you, so we never saw ourselves as downtown people. And choosing, uh, we rented a car when we went there on like a scouting trip, mm -hmm. and the entire day we were driving around all the suburbs looking for where we were gonna start. The textbook church planning. Yeah, spot. so it was like the intersection of yeah. like the highway and the business yeah. community, the school district, and the <coughs> median uh, income bracket. Right. And we were fighting the whole day yeah. like it was like Jess and I were kind of at each other and it wasn't right it was weird and yeah. it was just like this it was it was a weird day wasn't it so we took the rental car back and we just like I was someone said to us like you know just start where you mm. would normally go like what do you like and I was like oh, I like coffee and then we'd just go to the coffee shop then and start there and so we um and it was downtown and so mm -hmm. we found this cool coffee shop and then we just kind of looked at each other and there was the only peace that we had for the whole day. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, let's be real, that's what it was like. Yeah. And uh, and it was like, maybe, maybe we're meant to be downtown. Right. And we're like, we're not, wow. we're not downtown so people. It's now though, because it, like, it fits yeah. and it makes mm -hmm. sense now. But back wow. then it was like, we don't know cities at all. Right. Like we don't. Right. We've never, we had never we're lived not urban. in cities. Yeah. Calgary, yeah. where we were in Calgary, is no, definitely not urban. Not urban. And I'm from no. a small country town in Victoria. Mm. Wow. So, <laughs> um, so we tested it. We like we felt the presence of God, That's and we're right. in the cafe. And I said, well, if we're going to do it, people are going to come to church. So we invited a guy. Hypothetically, just said, "Hey, man." <laughs> to our church, it didn't yeah. exist yet. We said, "Hey, man, we're not. We're moving in like you know five months, but like if we started a church here, would yeah. you come?" And he kind of looked Jess up and down. Literally, um, like, it was a bit creepy. Up and down. <laughs> That's amazing. It was a bit creepy, wow. but. And, and, but if it works, you know. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. well, it's a good, whatever you got, like, you know, babe, that top's not low enough for church planning. Like, win people. No. Okay. And uh, so uh, he said, "Yeah, he I did, would." Yeah. He yeah. said if, if it was your church, if you guys were the one doing it, I would come. I would come check it out. Mm. And, and that, like, that for us, that was like a Jacob fleece, like, like <clears throat> a, what is it, Gideon's fleece, whatever yeah. that mm -hmm. fleece thing is. Amazing. <laughs> I love whatever that fleece thing is. Whatever that fleece thing is. Also reading the word. Yeah. Oh, the Bible? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You've got to read the you Bible. you got to do that, too. <laughs> but you yeah. talked about peace. Right. Mm. It's like yeah. peace as right. your indicator on yeah. which direction to go. That's, and I, right. that's, that's been true. so key for us when you said that. I was like, yeah. 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 Um, because we've moved at times in mm. different decisions um, and it, peace hasn't been our indicator mm. yeah. and it hasn't worked. Mm. Yeah. And so now we're just, we were talking about it recently, just learning from that. Mm -hmm. Always just wait for the peace of God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. True. it's been huge. That's right, being yeah. patient with patient. that. Yeah. Yeah. God's got a perfect timing. Yeah. 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 But yeah, we... It's true. Uh, I think in terms of like the dynamic of marriage, it's so it's so important to be kind of real for all the church planners mm -hmm. watching that yes. that fighting and that that intensity is very yeah. normal because I think part of the, well the biggest opposition is going to be against your marriage and your family. Mm -hmm. oh, it's true. So it is. And the key to the church is the health of our relationship, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so yeah, early on we were like at each other, and mm -hmm. and uh, I just felt like the walls of New York like closing in on me. Yeah, like, you feel I, small. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm trapped. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. And so then, but then I didn't know how to deal with that and I can't deal with it in my mm -hmm. own flesh. And so I, that would then really uh, fall upon Georgie and, and Brooks and, mm. and our family. And so Georgie, in her wisdom, was like, get out of here, get out of the apartment, go pray. Um, but it was in that moment that um, everything changed. It was really early on, but I felt like the pressure of like trying to save the city in a day, mm -hmm. even though it's a ridiculous yeah. thought, it's yeah. kind right. of like that's what yeah. vision, faith, right. like you yeah. gotta like, yes. you gotta win everyone in a moment. Because you have all these years and then you land. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like the build up, these mm -hmm. years right. of a vision. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of church planners feel that, or yeah. you're comparing yourself to other launches or other churches. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So you have all these voices in your head telling yeah. you what 
you should be doing or could be doing or where right. you should be up to. But it's so powerful just uh, just started circling blocks in, in New York and praying right. and the Holy Spirit told me two things. It'll be according to your prayer and one divine connection a day. Mm. And then that just that's radically great. changed my life and I still right. live that way yeah. today. Yeah, you still do yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah, so then I, thought, I was like, that's, that's genius. First of all, it's like, of course, God's going to build His church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So He's right. going to pray through me like you guys were saying mm -hmm. and learning just to request what He wants. Mm -hmm and line up to right. his will for the church. And then the other thing was, that's 365 people I personally can impact right. without any team. Yeah. yeah. And Because I was pretty defeated, we didn't have a team, and I was like, oh man, how are we gonna do this? And then mm -hmm. sure enough, the next day, we, it was freezing cold in New York, mm -hmm. and uh, Brooks was in the stroller, and we're just Aussie family, and all these kids have these like big sleeping bags over them for the cold, but we didn't realize you needed that for your kids, so mm -hmm. Brooks is like, you know, we had like a light blue. Like, where do I get those things? Where do we get those things? So we went to a baby store and we bought it, but there was where we had our first divine connection. Yeah. Wow. This amazing girl named Damaris, and she's still in our church on our wow. team, uh, so you know, cool. five years, six years later. But through her, like, it, not even exaggeration, probably 500 people are in our church wow. or more mm -hmm. just from that first angels. connection. Wow. Wow. And a few weeks wow. ago, mm -hmm. we announced our new worship pastor, and it dawned on me as I was speaking and announcing it. Mm -hmm and said, how did you come to church? And he said, oh, my brother invited me, and my brother was invited by Aaron, who is the brother of Damaris, who was the first Divine Connection. We met in the baby store. So this is, this is four years, five years later, and I just said to the whole church, listen, this is what God can do. Like that first connection, I'm now announcing our new worship pastor came from that first connection, and the whole church obviously just erupted. Because here's the thing, and like, I got my husband back in that moment when God said, I was like, thank mm -hmm. you, Jesus, because mm -hmm. like he told Josh, one divine connection and pray. Right. So yeah. this visionary just knew, oh, I could do my one divine connection at breakfast time. And then he's free to like pray and dream mm -hmm. and be mm -hmm. a dad yeah. to his new baby. Yeah. And I was like, thank so you, good. Jesus. <laughs> um, but it's so, it's so true that we can feel like when we church plant that we have to have everything lined up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, Exactly. We have to have right. our kids' ministry sorted, and yeah. this mm -hmm. ministry, and this, yeah. and this. And I really loved um, coming to something that wasn't established and just mm -hmm. focusing on people. And I think for any church planters watching, it's so important, right, to, for them to know you don't need all those ducks lined up. No. Right. Focus on the one divine connection. Mm -hmm. Focus on prayer, um, people, yeah. and prayer. Yeah. Mm. Did you? That's awesome. Did you guys feel like a specific, unique? strategy at some point like to reach people um wouldn't i think for us it's always been about just one person at a time you know yeah. before we came over Tell the doctor came yeah story. um so uh obviously the the largest church in the, in the world is the one uh, with dr Yongi cho mm -hmm. in um korea and so dr kim was speaking at the every woman conference and um, mm -hmm. i got to drive her around and and when she found out that we were going to Hong Kong, I remember um, she said to her translator, who was then translating to me, um, she basically just said in, in a nutshell, uh, just focus on the one. Mm. Mm. Just yeah. focus on just one person at a time. Amazing. So this is a person that passes the largest church in the world. And she says, just focus Amen. on one person yeah, at a time. Great. And wow. God will bring those people. That's yeah, yeah. So and, that's, you know, and that's really God doing it for you then, isn't yeah. it? You don't yeah. have to right. try to make things happen. Yeah. Right. He can do it for you. So good. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a funny story when we first arrived. We wanted to do a little outreach in one of the universities. And we spent all this money setting everything up. And not one person from that university ended up coming to the church wow. and, and the wow. opening. Mm. But there was one person there who was also performing and uh, he was just walking around the campus, strumming away on his guitar and, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people making a little bit of fun of him. Anyway, he gets up to sing and he has this amazing voice. He started singing um, um, better Robbie man. Williams, Sorry, Robbie Better Williams, Man. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as we heard him, we thought he could be our worship pastor. Wow. So we, we, we started targeting him and we said, hey, do you need a lift home? So we got him in the That's car. Awesome. <laughs> you didn't have to. We had, <laughs> we had 30 to 40 minutes with him in the car. And then our next step was, OK, we'll take you out for coffee and buy you breakfast or something. Mm. So we met with him again. And we had two or three of those connections. And then we said, look, look we're, we're looking for someone to, mm -hmm. to lead the music in one of our gigs. And we said gigs. And he came That's along, and, and to cut a long story short, he is now our 
worship pastor today. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. He'd, yeah. Never, he'd never led worship before. He had actually been looking for a church. He'd gone to a number of churches. And so when he came to ours, I remember we did the altar call and, um, and he said to me afterwards, when you said, uh, come home, he said, mm. that, was, that was for me. Oh. I felt oh, like wow. that was yeah. for me. The thing is, wow. he was never meant to be at that university gig because mm. when his friend heard that it was mm. a Christian thing that was happening, his friend calls him up, his name's Jerry, and he said, hey, Jerry, I don't do Christian gigs. You know, you need to step in for me and do this. So he wasn't even meant to be there. So that's wow. a divine yeah. God moment. That's and right. it's through him that um, he's built our worship team. We have amazing professional yeah. some of them professional just about um, the whole band of professionals professional he, <laughs> he would incredible. he would turn up yeah. every sunday he'd have amazing. to come straight from his gigs mm-hmm. yeah. and and look he at the beginning he wasn't really saved and <laughs> who knows where he had been and <laughs> he could smell the whiskey on him and all sorts of things but he just he just led yeah. and week after week month after month he got saved and yeah. Now he's just a great young man. He's married. He's got kids. Um, You know, his kids are in the church, and you know, he he grew up without a father, so he Mm. never had any of that. And so he is so grateful now that he has that for his children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, I I think what's important is that you know, for certain people, you never put a time limit on them to to change or Mm -hmm. you just let God do it because there was definitely I mean there was a couple of people that came to our church and um, they said we can't believe you've got this person up on stage he smells of whiskey (laughs) 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 but you know if that person will see him now he's a different person right yeah Yeah. Yeah. he's completely different and he's a he's a God transformation two or three years ago we had a visiting C3 pastor come through and he was just amazed at this guy's voice. Mm-hmm. And he, he turned to us and said, hey, where do I get one of them? <laughs> and we said, they don't come into the church like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they come pretty broken. He's, he's five or six years. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So what would you guys say is the toughest part of planting a church? Toughest part? I don't know, there's a lot of tough parts. I think for me, it's probably the comparison thing. Mm-hmm. We've talked about a lot of great stories at this table. A lot of really encouraging stories <clears throat> but there's people that you're sitting there <clears throat> and you don't have that worship leader that walks through the doors you don't have that divine connection mm. a place you go to a coffee shop and the person doesn't want to come to church so I think the toughest part for me has been to make sure that I am true to our own journey yeah. and making sure that I am mm-hmm following just what God asks us to do and not comparing to anybody else's story Um, because every journey is different and maybe you're not we're not supposed to have the same journey as somebody else yeah yeah comparison is huge like and one story might give you an indication of the way um, but it's uh, a really difficult thing is even making the right decisions and Mm -hmm. second guessing like which is kind of like it it feels like a small thing but right to continually have to navigate so, decision yeah. making yeah. is what you kind of have to do. But then every time you're ready to make a decision, you second guess because oh, I don't because wow. it never looks like what Wayne and Mary what it looked like for you. And right. then when you're facing your challenges, Goliath it's doesn't true. seem to wear the same clothes every time. Mm. And it makes so, so much sense like, looking back. Yeah. But when yeah. you're looking forward, it's so blurry and confusing. But know, then everybody's looking to you to make a decision. And yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, and we need to, and that's kind of what leadership is. Yeah, sequence of. Mm. And it's decisions. interesting with the social mm-hmm. media aspect now because right. you really are so exposed to what everyone's doing right now across yeah. right. the world. So we really made a conscious decision to not look at social media early days. We just mm. sort of talked to each other and went, "We're going to put our head down, that's not so not care what anyone else is doing, not mm. worry about that." And it. You know, because so often it's like, you can be feeling great yeah. and then you open right. social media and you feel so <laughs> yeah. terrible about yeah. it. And God's like, no, don't look at it, just look at me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so for us that really helped um, right. and we used it to get the word out about our church, but we didn't mm-hmm. look at a lot of other, of what was going on. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, so really I think that helped so because it's, yeah. it's crippling. It crippled yeah. me yeah. seeing mm-hmm. how amazing everyone yeah. else is. Yeah. Yeah. It's super yeah. So. Yeah. I think also just remaining um, in Christ and actually just being a Christian. Being a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> for me right now. Because I think it's, it so easily can turn into just a leadership exercise or right. 
That's true. Um, but really just staying true to the gospel and, and staying true to identity in Christ because mm. all, of, mm. all of the church culture mm. and what God wants in our church flows out of our relationship with Christ. Mm. Right. And it's just so easy to get our eyes on other things and yeah. things we need to do and people we need to raise up and everything right. else. But really, uh, it's it's really just about our connection to Christ. So I think mm. that's been mm. um, both on a positive side mm. really helpful for, for me personally to just stay focused on that, but also difficult when in times I haven't. Right. I mean, you're busy and it's not mm. because you don't want to, you know, stay focused on Christ. You just feel like this pull yeah. in all these yeah. different yeah. directions. Right. But really, I just think, uh, not losing sight of who Christ is and mm-hmm. why he's called you to do this and always keeping that the main thing mm-hmm. because our job is really just to point people to Jesus okay. and help them see who they are in Christ. But we could just be building our thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and all, all, that, all that we build could just fall to nothing right. unless mm-hmm. we really build on the eternal thing. So yeah. I think staying focused. Right. Yeah, it's so inspiring for the congregation to see their leaders' Christianity. Like, yeah. I think... That's it's true. everything. Yeah. yeah. It's but, everything. but we think maybe through our filter and our perspective, oh, they're inspired by, you know, a, a message or inspired by the mm. vision. Or, mm. But really, you know, they got, they got bills and job mm. and, you know, stuff right. at home and they're just trying to make it through life. Yeah. And so we're out here in our church culture in our little bubble, but they're just like, I don't, they're not really connecting the mm. dots. Mm. Yeah. Like, like your story with the, with the worship leader, it was a journey of grace, mm. of just right. continually showing him the grace of mm. God yeah. and, and trusting that the grace of God would bring the transformation. Yeah. Right. And whatever it ended up, whether he turned into a worship leader or not, mm. who cares? Yeah. As long as he knows Jesus. Mm. The, the byproduct, as you know, yeah. he, he's going to serve God through his yeah. gift. Mm. Right. Um, so I, I, I just think that that can be missed sometimes. It's so yeah. true. We can get caught up in what the task is That's and true, yeah. um, rather than just... And because life flows out, that living water, that mm, river yeah. flows out mm. of us and it, it will grow right. and the church mm. will be built, right? right? But it's when we're focusing on the wrong thing that mm. it stops that flow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, this has been amazing, I thought. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for yeah. um, talking mm-hmm. um, about your church planning stories. I know so many people are going to be impacted. So we've really loved um, being with you today and um, we'll see you next time at the Masterclass Roundtable.